Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Juan Carlos, and welcome to Trail Un Unedited, where we highlight amazing coaches, athletes, and amazing people from the trail communities for unscripted and unedited conversations. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with a runner, endurance runner, and a triathlon athlete, Reed Boros. Um, Reed, welcome to Trail Unedited. Uh, thank you for making time to speak with me today. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm doing uh, pretty good, all things considered. Oh. It's a very weird world we're living in right now. I know, I know. And we still have COVID amongst us, uh, upon us. And I do hope that uh, we still have a race season in 2021. I truly do hope yeah. so. I, I'm training, but I'm training for nothing. <laughs> I have no I races on the, uh, in the future, not, not until, you know, not while we have COVID. How about you? Yeah, it's, uh, I'm definitely getting back into a rhythm of training, but um, my big, big weeks are still a uh, long ways to come just with, it's hard to get out the door and get big, big miles in. Yeah. I can uh, keep maintaining, but to actually go out there and do the 100 mile weeks, um, it's just, it's hard to do that right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. So once again, read. Uh, thank you for making time uh, to speak with me today. It's truly a pleasure to have you here on Trail Unedited. So let's get started. Now, you know, the first question I ask is, and a lot of, you know, this is this is one of those questions that people want to know is, who is Reed Boros? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I guess I'm an ultra runner, but I uh, su surprisingly, I've only actually done ultra running for I only raced for a year because I didn't get to race last year. So I'm pretty new to the sport. Um, okay. I came through the sport of triathlon. So I grew up swimming, doing track. I remember like I would swim on Thursdays, hop out of the pool, throw my running stuff on, and my parents would drive me over to the track. And then I'd go do tr my track workout. And then my aunt and uncle would pick me up. I'd stay over the night. And then I'd be back in the pool again at 6 a.m. the next morning. So that was kind of wow. my whole childhood was, was that. <clears throat> I just, I love pushing myself. And I always just, I wanted to be like the best athlete I could be. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I remember writing down something a really long time ago that the second I didn't find the sport fun anymore, I was going to walk away from it. And there was a point where it just became a, it felt like a job. It wasn't fun. I didn't want to get out of bed to go and swim at 6 a.m. Like I couldn't dig as deep as I used to dig. So I had to just, I walked away completely. Uh, left a lot of friendships behind for a bit. I'm reconnecting with those people now, but yeah, yeah I just completely walk away and wow. forget that it was a part of my life. And then I found the trails. Yeah. Yeah. Now you've been running at a very, you started running at a, at, at a young age. Yeah. Yeah. So, my, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, my, my parents uh, are very, very active. Like my mom's done uh, Ironman world championships twice. Wow. Um, yeah. My dad has done multiple Ironmans. My brother, my brother rode like 15,000 kilometers last year on his bike. Like he is just crazy. Wow. Like crazy. Yeah. Okay, all this information is all brand new to me. Like, we need to have a part two, <laughs> another episode of this, a part two. Because, <laughs> wow, well, that's incredible. Yeah. That is truly incredible. So, as I was, um, as I was trying to say, is that you started running at a, at a young age. Um, what of all the sports? What was it about running that got your attention and that got you running? Um, it's actually weird. Running was my least favorite of the three. <laughs> You're not even going to believe that. Um, yeah, I used to, it was more, I just loved the com camarade. Com uh, Moderate? Moderate, there we go. Don't worry, I have those days too. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like all of my best memories are just like running with the boys, like, yeah. the, like cross country, just like some of those friendships that I built in high school. And in middle school, we're just all through running. Wow. Um, 
swimming, you just, you kind of have your head in the water. You build some cool friendships, but you're spending a lot of time in your head alone, just kind of escaping the world. Yeah. Whereas running, like, you can really spend the time alone, but you can also really build some pretty cool relationships. Like yeah. I have with you. I, I never would have met you if I didn't go for a run with some people. I was just going to say that. It's amazing how this sport and, and uh, for example, also OCR that I do, uh, whether it be trail running, it's amazing how you can, it, it, it brings people together, yeah. you know, and you, and you develop and when you meet new people, you develop some friendships because I was invited to go for a, a nice run with Jay West uh, which we will be talking about uh, later as uh, as we go here. And I went there. Uh, Cynthia Campanaro was there. You were there. And then that's how I met you. And um, yeah. And then when you sent me your bio and I read your bio, I was like, wow, <laughs> this is truly impressive. You have such an impressive resume. And your running is like none other. And you know what? I'm not going to say too much because I'm going to say because I have so many questions to ask you and I want everybody to know, uh, definitely know, learn more about you. But yeah, that's where you and I met. Yeah. And I'm thankful for that because now you're here. Well, I'm thankful. <laughs> this is my first podcast, so this is pretty cool. Hey, listen, man. Um, for one, that's great. I'm the first and uh, people get to learn about you. Um, you know, I had Cynthia Campanaro and I had Jay West. Now you're the third one out of the group. Awesome. I wonder who's next. <laughs> so tell us about some of your best uh, finishes and accomplishments in your running career. Um, specifically running or, or uh, triathlon too? Um, no, let's go. Let's go strictly running, okay. because um, we will be touching on triathlon um, uh, a little bit later. Awesome. So I would say that um, conquer the Canuck was a twelve-hour race last year. It's my very first ultra marathon, and I uh, I ended up winning it, and I ran one hundred and twenty-five k in twelve hours. Um, yeah. And I, I fell in love with the sport the second, like I would say halfway through that race, it was like this, why have I not been doing this my whole life? Yeah. Like why am I waste, why did I waste my time doing triathlon for so many years? Like <laughs> I'm so much better at this. This is so much more fun. Yeah. Like fun was like the main part of it. It was, it just felt like I was just having a chat with my friends and like I had a, all my friends came out and we're, hanging out my parents were there it was just it just felt like a big party and it was a looped course so I kept on coming around and seeing them now now a 12-hour race 125 kilometer is not an easy task to do you know this very well and, and if you're a runner you know this it takes a toll on you so how did you prepare for that what was your training like um, I was doing a lot of back-to-back -back 50Ks. <laughs> All right. But I would run 50K in the morning. Around 8 a.m., I'd run 50K. And I, I would do like about um, five minutes per K around there for the first 50K. And then I'd go to work and work an eight-hour shift. Sometimes I'd go to school too in between that. Okay. And then the next day I would go out and I'd like smash a 50 K and try and go about four thirties or faster for 50 K. Oh and uh, okay. I was just doing that almost every weekend leading into, um, leading into conquer the Canuck. Yeah. To maintain that pace at 4.5, let's say for a, you know, consistently in the 50K is really hard to do. It's not an easy task. Even yeah. to be consistent and maintain a five-minute pace for a, on a 50K run, you know, without any stopping, it can take a toll. I mean, that, that takes a lot of training. Yeah. Well, actually, we, that runs right into my other – I would say 
the biggest, or I would say there's two big accomplishments of 2020, regardless of the fact that I wasn't racing. Yeah. And the first one was on my brother's birthday, actually, which was supposed to be, I was supposed to be racing a hundred K uh, called the Canyons Endurance Run out in California. Okay. And just with COVID it was canceled. So okay. one of my friends um, who's a triathlete, Jesse the Elf, he, uh, he biked beside me and I ran a 50 K in three hours and 20 minutes. Well, just under three hours, 19 minutes and 59 seconds. Wow. And the average is basically four minute case for the wow. whole day. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a pretty, like, it really felt good that I was able to do that. Um, like I'm really proud of that accomplishment. Yeah. That is incredible. Um, I mean, the longest I've done was a 12 hour and it was, uh, there were loops, um, five mile, which is an AK loop. And you do as many as you can in a 12 hour period, yeah. you know, and that was my, yeah, that was back in April when COVID came in, <laughs> it was a virtual run, but it was uh, a lot of athletes, a lot of us athletes um, worldwide. We did it. And that was the longest I ever done. I think I reached a, a 96 kilometers 80 or 96 kilometers something like that but that really took a toll on my body my back my hips my knees and because i did it on the road so i mean that takes a toll on your body like what do you do to recover for something like that see this is <laughs> nothing like, i really don't do a lot anymore and like i think that's what took the fun out of triathlon for me is i was I was always doing those one percenters, but like for me, running is enjoyment. Yeah. And like, yes, I'm chasing these crazy performance goals, but at the end of the day, I'm doing it because I love it and it makes me happy. So you know, I, I just don't want to waste the time on the foam roller unless I really need to. I don't want to go do the ice baths. I don't want the compression. Like I just love the pain and I love the performance. You know, I, you you mentioned something in the beginning that I truly agree with. You know, running for me was, I come from a, from playing. I, I was a soccer player, soccer, yeah. So you know, played for many years, and so running wasn't an issue. I love running. Then I stopped. I got into wrestling, and then I, and then I found OCR, and all of a sudden, you know, and, and at at this particular time, running wasn't something that I liked. I, I didn't want to do it, and all of a sudden, here I am. I'm running. And I'm loving it. And I actually love it. Truly love getting out um, to the trails and running like we did when we went out uh, at, uh, at the Dundas uh, Valley there. So um, let's move on. So you've trained and raced around the world uh, with elite, professional, and Olympic triathletes. Now, this is exciting. <laughs> Uh, you spent five years knocking on the Canadian national team door when you decided to take a break from multi-sport and focus on running. Talk to me about that time and what was going on. Um, do you mean like why I left or why, like what yeah. I did? Well, why you left, why did you stop? And, um, you know, what transpired? Was there like, what was going on at that time when you make that decision? You know what, forget about multi-sport anymore. I'm just going to concentrate on running. Actually, um, one of my teammates called me when I stopped showing up to practices quite as much. Yeah. And he basically said, like, if you want to do this sport, you have to be all in. And I've actually never forgot that conversation. It's still very clear in my mind. And he ended up going to the Olympics. And wow. I, I just, I had no interest in like doing that to my body anymore which is funny because now I do it to my body running. But yeah, it was just, I just, I don't know what happened. I just got checked out. Like I said, I just wasn't loving it anymore. Like I, I love when I want to get out of bed for something. And yeah. if I don't want to get out of bed for something, then it's probably not worth doing for me anymore. I'm a really all or nothing kind of person. Yeah, okay. And, uh, it was just, it became nothing again. <laughs> wow. Uh, so... I mean, you're now, you're running now. So did it take you some time to get back into that rhythm to find that love for the sport again? 
yeah I don't even remember what I did like I I don't really remember training for two or three years I definitely like I stayed in shape but I I would just like hop on my bike or go for a run on the trails like I don't really remember going out there and training like any sort of structure like I remember one time I just I just woke up one day and I was like I think I'm gonna go and see if I can run a marathon today I, I, just like I, that yeah so it's just a few things like that like I never really like when I took the break it wasn't really a break but it's super unstructured yeah yeah I just started running on the trails and yeah okay what would what would you prefer road running or trail running oh trail running 100 percent. thank you I love road running but not as much as I love trail. The, the thing about road is just like it really impacts your bones, your joints. But when you trail run and you're one with nature, whether you be by yourself or with a group of people that enjoy that same passion and you're running, there's no, it's, it's like none other. It's just a great feeling. It's just, the, it's like to breathe in that air. It's just, it feels great. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And you guys have some great trails over there, man. I can't wait to head back and run with you guys again. But you know what I would like to do is go do a 5K with you, a nice, good, you know, fast speed, and uh, just to see where I fit in in your world. Because <laughs> you're fast, buddy. Thanks, man. I <laughs> actually um, ran 5K PD this summer. Yeah? Yeah, just on a whim. <laughs> in what what is your personal best in the 5k uh 1601 you should be in the olympics what are you doing here <laughs> uh, fast. i think those guys are in the 13s now at this point okay so what is your f- personal best 5k on a trail i think the truth I, i've never really raised a trail 5k no no Hmm, interesting. Yeah. And I keep that in mind for uh, when I go do a, a Sulphur Springs race, yeah. <laughs> 5 or 10K. <laughs> um, now, the Burlington Bandidos, is that what the, true, what the crew is called? Or is yes. it the Burlington Crew? No, it's just the, the Bandidos. It's just a few, like, I've only really been accepted into the group this year. Um, <laughs> Last year, I think I ran more ty- or more uh, miles with Tyler than uh, with Tyler Chakra than than Jay even did. But I wasn't officially <laughs> part of the group. <laughs> okay, so there wasn't like a special ceremony when you got in. Yeah. It was like, okay, come in. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> now, for those that don't know, but the Burlington Bandidos or the Burlington Crew are just a, a, a group of people, uh, friends that go out and run at the Dundas Valley Park, right? Trail park. I Bronte a lot too. Like Bronte is normally like the weekday spot. Oh, is it? Central Park, yeah. If you guys don't know, you guys got to go check it out. It's such a beautiful place to go and find trails. There's so many trails. If you love trail running, this is the place to go. Now, I'm in the city in Toronto, and it's. I have to get my trails in part, as part of my training. So I have to try. I have to travel out, and I usually travel to nearby locations that I usually go and train. But uh, this one in Dundas Valley, buddy, when I met you there, when I went and run with you guys, it was such a beautiful trail, man. Especially the section with the waterfalls. Oh, wow. Now, is there a moment in your athletic career that you're most proud of? I'm not sure if I have an answer for that one. (laughs) <laughs> think about it yeah. um i would say like canada games um for triathlon i apologize that's okay <laughs> she knows um, when i do episode uh, interviews she's got to be here anyways go on sorry it's all good um yeah I, I would say canada games for triathlon um just because my everyone was there my my parents were there uh, my aunt and uncle came, and my grandmother, who um, actually passed away this year, she was she was there, and it was Sorry just. Sorry to hear that. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's um, 
when you share something, even though it wasn't the race I wanted, um, when you share something with so many people that you love, like it just makes it that much more special. Yeah. And it's nice also, you know, uh, to have family. I mean, it's nice to have your friends and the loved ones there, but when you have your family, like it's it, that feeling is just a really special feeling. And I love it when my family comes down to uh, some of the races uh, to watch it. Uh, I just love that feeling. And uh, guys, my friends that you guys love to go and watch, guys, I love you guys. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but there's nothing like having a family member or your family, the entire family watching. Um, listen, let me go back to your triathlete uh, years. Now, what was your training like? like? Pick a race, right? Now, what would, you, what would your training block or blocks be like? How would you prepare for a, for a, a triathlon event? Um, I'd be swimming like 20 to 30 K a week, depending on how deep into the block you'd be. So you're looking at like basically an hour and a half to two hours of swimming a day. Wow. Um, and often you, you try, like everyone talks about the, the feeling of the water and, uh, yeah, you can't really ever lose it. So basically I, I wouldn't really take a day off in the water, even if it was just really easy, just kind of spinning my arms out. So yeah, 20 to 30 K a week, uh, swimming, swimming. Probably, wow. yeah, running, I was probably only doing when I look back, probably 30 to 80 K, but a lot of speed work, like on the track twice a week. And then my long run would be like a jog. Now it'd be like 16 K and now. I do that on like Tuesday for fun. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to say, it's yeah. like, that's nothing yeah. for you. <laughs> and then riding, like riding was basically as much time as you could get in the saddle. Yeah. Like three hour long rides on the weekend and hour to hour and a half to two and a half hours during the week. Yeah. And yeah, just at the end of the week, it'd be 20 to 30 hours, depending on where you were in that training block. But yeah, just, a lot of volume and not a lot of time for other things. Like I That's probably crazy. couldn't tell you how any movie I, w I watched in those five years ever happened or finished. I'd fall asleep as soon as like the TV would go on or I'd lay down in bed, I would fall asleep and I'd wake up and it'd be the next morning. Always. Wow. Yeah. You, you know, I, I bring this up because um, I don't know if you know, we have a Canadian athlete who is, uh, um, to me, is one of the is one of the most um, known OCR athletes in Canada. His name is um, Jesse Bruce. I don't know if you've heard of him. Yeah, um, I reckon. So he is such a talented human being. I love him. He's like a brother. He's the one that got me into OCR. So the uh, he is now also training for to do a triathlon and sometimes he posts um, small um, segments or videos of his training, whether it be, you know, racing or, um, or the, the running part or the biking and wow, the amount of like the dedication, the commitment that goes into doing something like that. I could only imagine, you know, that you have that and you have to have that. You have to have, I guess, that will and that drive, you know, uh, to do something like that because it's not easy. No, it's, it's not easy at all. Did you at times in your training think, you know what, I had enough, I'm going to give up. This is too much. And I would say like probably once a week. <laughs> like when you're... Be, like I said, like you have no life, you're exhausted all the time. Like you, there's not like the enjoyment was the racing, but at the end of the day, like you're only racing five, six times a year when you're at that level, it's, it's too expensive and too hard to get to these big races. So yeah, yeah like you're spending your whole life training just to have like six hours of racing more or less, or maybe 12 hours of racing in the whole wow. year. Yeah. Wow. To me, I've never done a triathlete. I don't think I can because I said this before. I'm not a, I can swim, but I'm not a strong swimmer. 
and I do have a little bit of a phobia when it has to do with a bunch of people going into the water all together and to the fear of a hand pushing me down or getting kicked or something and it, it that plays with my whole mental so I do only duathlons leave the water aside do yeah. what you can <laughs> and yeah. so I love duathlons <laughs> hey we got to do one um what is your biggest inspiration read uh actually he almost broke the world record for the 100k yesterday i love watching people like jim wamsley race like yeah yeah i like anyone who can turn themselves themselves inside out like that's what i love to watch like anyone who just has the guts to just go and maybe maybe have to drop out because they went so hard like yeah. that's just impressive to me i love watching that that's awesome now is there a um, is there a race that you would love to do or that you dream of doing someday uh western states nice yeah nice i would have thought you would have said uh sky running no um yeah i have this <clears throat> it's i i don't know like there's some sort of like cosmic force that's like pulling me towards Western states. Like I, I can't get it out of my head. Like every time I'm out there and hurting, like it just pops into my head. Yeah. yeah. I just, I'm obsessed with it. I wouldn't say like, I don't think it's happening tomorrow or anything. Like I think it's a, like a five to 10 year down the road kind of plan, but yeah, wow. I really want to get in. What about in Europe? Are there any, any races over there or, trail races that you would love to go and do um there seems to be a lot more running uh more events going on down there than we do have here in the americas i think i like i'd like to see like what the states and canada can offer before i go over yeah. to europe um yeah. there's a lot of really talented athletes in the states that are far better than me so for me to go and spend probably $5,000 or something to go and do a race over in Europe when I could spend a quarter of that and go down to the yeah. state. It makes more sense to me right now. But as I get more experience, like who knows, I'll go wherever, wherever the sport takes me. And you know what, but you're right. And I do need to acknowledge that we here in Canada, we do have some of the amazing ultra distance events coast to coast, whether it be in BC, in Quebec, here in Ontario. Uh, we do have the ultra, um, the UTMB uh, in Quebec coming up soon. Um, I think it's in June or July that I'm thinking of doing. Um, it's such a beautiful place to, to go and trail run. Um, and they got various rate, uh, various distances, anywhere from, I think it's like a 15 all the way to 100, 100, 100 miler, which is something that... Uh, you're well aware of yeah. you've done <laughs> so no but you're right it's true there are a lot, of, a lot of races and events here in canada and the u.s that you can go to for a quarter of that and i also i have a really good relationship with jeff and heather of happy trails so okay. i i uh i end up doing a lot of their events because i they just put on a lot of fun events and yeah. they they like watching me race and they're really supportive people. So yeah, to be able to just go and do a hundred mile in your backyard is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So Reed, how do you approach nutrition and how do you feel for races, especially um, these long distance races that you do? I, that's something I'm still trying to figure out. So <laughs> you asked me what my best accomplishment is. I'll tell you my worst one too. So last year in, uh, foxtail 100 okay. miles yeah. um, which again like jeff and heather were the ones who put that one on and it was awesome there's nothing wrong with how they did it was just my stomach did not like me that day <laughs> I, uh, I ended up having some i i won't sugarcoat it i i threw up 26 times oh, in a hundred wow. miles and i i finished um it was still a pretty good time and yeah, I, I did well, all things considered, but yeah, it, it's still something I'm trying to figure out. Um, 
I've tried Mir Energy, which is kind of like a date paste. They come in purple packages. They're kind of hard to get in Canada. And then the other one is Spring Energy. So okay. those two tend to work for me. And then for solids, I found Picky Bars. They have one that tastes like coffee. And if you know anything about me, I'm obsessed with coffee. Probably more yeah. than naturally. So, well, yeah, never mind. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Flavor, yeah, it's called the Smooth Caffeinator. And it is amazing. Tastes like coffee. And I'm really happy about that. Okay. And, um, my top secret that isn't so secret because I tell everyone is uh, I make my own cold brew for races. So I cold brew coffee. Okay. I put them in the little Solomon flask and I, uh, <laughs> I drink that. <laughs> when I head out there, you gotta bring me, you gotta, you gotta let me try some. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know what? Everybody has their own fuel, um, fueling that they do they go through their process that they do because it, it it fits them and it's true there's a lot of those fuel products or gels that you know are good but they don't necessarily work for everybody i've tried many and i remember doing long distance races and my stomach would just not feel good but the one thing it you know, that I did learn and I use now and I love. I don't know when we, I actually talked about it uh, when we were running, all of us. And I don't know if you were there, but I I um, I take these, you know, the baby formula packets, gels. Oh, yeah. yeah, I remember. I yeah. love those. Uh, yeah, the ones with rice. They work perfect for me and they give me all the calories that I need. And I feel great and my stomach doesn't get irritated and it. I don't get that nauseous feeling when I run, especially when I do long distances, right? But it just works for me. Everything else that I tried, I mean, they're beautiful, they're great, but they're not for me. It just doesn't sit well with my stomach. I can only imagine how many people go through this. Yeah. Well, me, like, I love spring energy. It's just, it costs so much money, like... <laughs> You know what I mean? Like baby food, like you said. I remember you saying it's so cheap. It's like a dollar. And it does wonders, buddy. Yeah. How can you go wrong with the baby? Like, I mean, if they love it and it's got to work for me. <laughs> um, watch everybody now go to the stores and Superstore and Metro and go buy them. <laughs> I'm telling you, they do wonders. Now, what are your thoughts? Let's talk recovery. So what are your thoughts on recovery? Like, when do you know you got to take a step back when you've been pushing so hard, whether it be in your training or in your competitions? Um, I would say if I'm running, if I'm meeting someone for a run and I fall back to sleep after the first alarm, I should probably text them and say I shouldn't go. Why? Because... I'm, as I said, like I'm an extremely motivated person and that's normally the first sign for me is like, if I can't get out of bed to do something I want to do, yeah. then I probably need a break. And sometimes it just yeah. means sleeping in and going and doing it on my own later. Sometimes it means skipping the whole day. And then the other thing is, um, if again, getting out of bed, that's normally my first signal. If I'm getting out of bed and I feel kind of creaky. That's when I start to wonder like, okay, like, do I need to go a bit easier today? Do I need to, is this something I should push through? Or yeah. am I, am I okay? Because when you're training for what we're training for, you're, you're going to hurt most days. It's yeah. just, you have to, well, you have to learn to listen to your body and know what that hurt means. And actually funny like it's kind of funny well not not exactly funny but my <laughs> flex has been a little strange this last week okay and i wrote something the other day like my biggest strength is that i can push through anything but my biggest weakness is also that i can push through anything sometimes it's hard to know do i keep pushing or do i back off yeah nothing penciled in on the calendar i chose to back off a little bit if something was penciled in, I probably would have ran 
another 20 or 30 K this week on the weekly average, but mm. because nothing was is penciled in, there's not a lot to risk or not a lot worth risking this for that. It makes more sense for me to back off and focus on my longevity rather than the short, the short term, um, yeah. gain, I guess. No, 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 I totally hear you. And I totally understand, especially I get those feelings, especially, I mean, as a, as a runner, but as an OCR athlete as well, it's like, I feel, um, I have those days where you get up and it's like, you, your plan is to go and run, uh, go and trail run. But there's times when my body just doesn't want to get up and you push and you push. Um, and I've had to learn literally learn to accept the fact that you know what there's something wrong if i go and do this i can i could be putting myself you know at risk for of injury maybe just take a step back and just you know what go back to sleep because your body's yeah like you said you gotta gotta listen to your body sometimes you know you do need to rest you can only push your body so much yeah and the last thing you want to do is uh, piss it off <laughs> yeah what we're doing is like we're basically just torturing our own bodies every day. So we do have to, we do have to give ourselves the, uh, the time to rebuild, but also mentally just give yourself a break every now and then. Like, yeah. But you said something really interesting and I find it hard sometimes to determine when am I pushing too much? When is too much, too much? Like, you know, you don't have it penciled in and sometimes you'll feel like, okay, I just did 30. I'm, I feel like I can do 10 or 20 more. But how do you know when too much is too much? Right? Yeah. And I, again, like, I don't think I can answer that for everyone. But yeah. for me personally, it's it's knowing my body. And from the years of triathlon training, from, like, my dad's also a physiotherapist. Like, he just taught me to just listen to my body and know know when something's screaming actually know when something's whispering that you should probably back off and figure out why it's whispering before it starts screaming. So sometimes wow. that means missing that day when you're or cutting something short, when it just kind of feels off, you might just feel a little tinge somewhere and to just back off completely that day. And then yeah. the next day you don't even notice it anymore. That's um, interesting, buddy. And that your dad is a physiotherapist. Listen, man. Yeah. I got to, I got to give him a call, <laughs> come in for a freebie. <laughs> Just do the virtual uh, assessments too. I mean, my parents are still back in New Brunswick. That's where I'm or originally from, but okay. um, he's doing the virtual appointments and he's had a lot of success with it. Yeah. That's good. Oh. That's, that's, that's really good. I mean, especially in these times now and so many small businesses suffering, um, or all businesses are suffering, but uh, that's good that he's doing well. So, Congrats to your dad. Um, now, what can we expect from you, Reed, uh, 2021, if we still have a race season and, you know, you know where we're, COVID is gone and we can get back to racing? Um, what can we expect from you from this year? What are your goals? Um, there's a couple that I'm going to hold a little closer to me. But um, in general, I would like to get back to racing some of the local stuff. Um, but by next fall, I'd like to go down to the States to JFK or run rabbit run or one of the bigger races. Um, I think the fall is a bit more realistic than late summer. Yeah. I think I can actually, um, like, I think I might be able to actually get into the States by then, <laughs> hopefully. Um, yeah. And I want to go. I want to go get my ass kicked. Like, I don't really know how else to say it. Like, I want I want to know what else is out there. I yeah. want to know how good the rest of the world is and the rest of North America is. And I think the only way to do that is to go and, yeah, get your ass kicked. And <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way, buddy. It's the only yeah. way. Um, now, is there anything that you would like to mention, you know, give any shout outs? Um, well, actually in 2020, 2021, I guess I'm, I'm working with Merrill now. So oh, nice. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. Pretty cool. Again, like I, I'm going to mention them like 45 times, happy trails because they, 
yeah, they set me up. She, like, Heather is the one who put me in contact with Meryl. So that is awesome, buddy. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been pretty cool. Um, We actually have a pretty cool project coming up in March that will coincide with the the Happy Trails um, nautical challenge event. So yeah, um, there's going to be some cool stuff there. Can you talk about it? Um, or is it still uh, on the down low? I don't much I'm allowed to talk about, so I won't say too much, but okay. it involves some products that I really like. We'll just say that. Maybe I can have you on before, you know, a week before that event. Yeah. We can For always sure. talk about it then, but that's yeah. good. Yeah. That's good. Um, and then I should probably mention, um, if anyone ever is on my Instagram, the guy who takes all the pictures, uh, body rocking, his name's Alexi Menjever. Guy's like amazing friend, but yeah, amazing friend, amazing runner. And yeah, he's the fastest guy I know with a camera. <laughs> like he's so good. <laughs> he's so good at the pictures. And Can I use him? Run with me. For sure. <laughs> yeah, he loves putting content out there and then yeah, all the banditos like Jay, Tyler, John, Jen, um, Denise, Michelle, like, and then, yeah, okay. you met Cynthia, like all these people that I surround myself with. Myself, like, again, I'm probably missing 45 people. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I get a little pissed off, but uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I mentioned my parents, so I at least <laughs> know, like, they're going to welcome me home next Christmas. Just as long as you mention the parents yeah. and the wife or girlfriend, yeah. you're fine. Exactly. <laughs> That's it. Hey, listen, man, you got to get in contact with this person. So when I come down, because I know I was supposed to come down a couple of weeks ago to run with you guys, but my plan is to still come just because of the whole lockdown. I still want to yeah. come down and run with you so you can give them a call. So you can come over with us and take pictures. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You guys rode up by there. So, oh. sure um, so, if people want to uh, are looking to find out more about you, where can they go? How can they find you? How can they communicate with you? Um, I'm super active on uh, Instagram. Um, I'm Reed Runs Fire on Instagram, and I share a lot about uh, coffee. Um, I've battled with some pretty rough mental health issues throughout my life, and I, yeah. I share pretty openly about that on social media. So a lot of people. Uh, resonate with that so that coffee and running is on my instagram um you can see my latte art in the morning when it turns out well on there post it most mornings um and i'm i'm on strava and i i post everything on strava um and i'll tell you if i had a shit run i'll tell you if i felt great like i'm pretty open and honest on there um i don't really hold my cards close on strava i think i just I just let it out there and yeah, if you want to follow me on there, like that's definitely where my training is. And yeah, I post everything. As soon as I walk in the door, it starts going up there. So, you know, mental issues, um, uh, is not an easy set. It's not an easy thing to talk about depending on the person, you know, some people like to talk about it because, you know, you know, it, it, it it's, it's good to help others. You know, people can relate, but sometimes, you know, people don't talk about it because it's just really hard. Um, this is a topic that I've talked about um, in, in, in our sport of OCR. Um, you know, there's a lot of athletes that go and they deal with mental illness and they battle through it. Some strong, amazing people out there. Um, brother, if you ever want to talk about it, um, you know, I would love to have you on and we can always talk about it. And uh, it, it, it's good. I find that it's good to talk about things like this because you don't know who could be battling to the, you know, the same thing and you could be helping somebody out. Yeah, I, I'm fully open to that. I, I found that every time I talk about it, it just gets easier. And uh, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate how many people deal with it and yeah. with this lockdown and being so isolated right now, I, I think more people yeah. are more than ever. And again, if someone ever actually needs a year to talk to, like 
my my whole thing is my whole Instagram is public. I check the little message requests that that go into the uh, into that little spam folder on the side. And I've had some people message me, and they're not they're not like at that point where it's getting dangerous, but just they just want to talk to me a little bit. And yeah, like I'm I'm always open to that. And if you want to do a full episode of mental health, I'm more than happy to do that. We like can I, definitely do that, buddy. I'm an I'm an open book. Um, there's not too many things I won't share, but yeah, I'm, I'm always happy to do that. No, you know what? So that's it. It's done. We'll do this again in a number of months. I'd yeah. love to have you on because you're just an amazing athlete, and 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 also because of this topic, it's so good to talk about because um, there's so many people that will be able to relate. Because there's a lot of people that do suffer through that, and the one thing that I have learned is that there's a lot of us um, who love running because it helps us. Oh, of course. Yeah. It's it's, very um, healthy for you. Um, So with that said, um, Reed, thank you so much for today, for making time to speak with me today. It has truly been a pleasure. I've learned a lot about you and there's so much more to learn. And uh, I'm glad that we can agree and uh, we can do this again soon. Um, I hope that everybody listening and watching learned as much as I have. Appreciate this true talent, uh, Reed Boros. Guys, go search, learn more about him, communicate with him, ask him any questions. Um, if you can't get a hold of him, send us a, a message and we'll pass it on to Reed. Reed, once again, thank you for making the time for today. Thank you for speaking with me. Uh, it's been a true pleasure, buddy. And I can't wait to see you guys soon and go run with you guys, the Burlington Bandidos. Yeah, Other than that, Hey, buddy. Thank you so much, man. Well, thank you. Okay, everybody. Well, you guys take care. Reed, take care, buddy. You too.